Greetings and welcome. Welcome to the Cell Guru Show. Very interesting show today because we're not really concentrating on the devices today. We're going to talk about everything around the ecosystem around the mobile phone. First, we'll talk about Android 12. Yes, the next big thing is almost here. The developer preview out, and most of the leaks turned out to be true. We'll tell you those that really matter. Next, we'll move on to something where we now are putting on our thinking hats and actually looking into the crystal ball. Five trends that we are pretty sure. Show you will see in 2021 to do with smartphones, and you know some of them are good, some not so good. We we'll move on then to our next to our Qualcomm segment where we talk about AI, a very very important part of your phone, the artificial intelligence and what all it does. Even though you have no idea, it's doing it all inside your phone. We'll end with something that a lot of you have been asking about. Maybe the most complex, dense, and confusing category in the entire world: how to buy. The best TWS earbud in your budget. All of that happening on the Cell Guru Show. Our top story is to do with Android 12. Now you know this happens every single time. A lot of leaks come out, a lot of rumors come out, and maybe one of the biggest thing that more exciting than a new phone coming out is the actual Android system that will run that phone. Android, as you all know, is of course the biggest system that actually runs most mobile phones, smartphones in the world. The operating system of choice at something like 80, 90 percent of these countries like India. Are on Android, and therefore, when the next version has to come out, it is a very big deal. And you know, somehow, the last one or two changes, Android has been going kind of slow. Google has only been doing things which is uh, just a little bit of a change, not a huge jump forward. But this time with Android 12, I think they've taken a huge leap. Google this week announced the first developer preview of Android 12, and has therefore kickstarted the next cycle of Android upgrades. Here are the top things to note from the first developer preview. Google has continued with the trend of toggling with the notifications and Android 12 has some subtle changes. There are some changes in the settings menu as well with blue tints and theming options now in the mix. Google has also added a new vibration mode which will be incredibly helpful for gamers for haptic feedback. There are a lot of changes under the hood of course. App launches will happen faster now. Notifications look a little bit better. Android 12 also brings about some app compatibility toggles in developer options. Google has always tweaked the security and privacy settings, but in the first Android 12 developer preview, there isn't much to report in this department this time around. As said before, this is only the first developer preview. Google is expected to launch the full Android 12 stable release sometime in September as it usually happens. Our next story, like I said, is our thinking hats and our crystal ball all being taken out all at the same time. We're going to tell you five things that the Cell Guru team thinks, five trends, five features you may say that will actually happen with smartphones in 2021. Like I said in the beginning, some of them are good and some trends not so good. For instance, I'll give you two examples: good, 5G, new form factors. The not so good. Chargers and headphones inside boxes will become a complete rarity. I think by the end of 2021, almost no one will be putting it in the box. A very, very sad trend. Evolution is the course of nature, and smartphones are a prime example of that. Every year, we see a lot of different smartphones coming into the market, each with a varying degree of change from the previous edition. Every year companies bring out smartphones with a bigger screen or with an extra camera lens at the back the only thing that is constant is the change so what can you expect from the smartphone market in 2021 let's find out the easiest and most obvious thing to note in the smartphone market this year will be more 5G supported devices 5G is no longer a buzzword in the tech industry it's become a reality India will soon witness its very own 5G revolution and smartphone manufacturers are already prepared. In 2020 many smartphones were launched that supported 5G before it even existed in India, but in 2021 this number will grow exponentially as 5G will come to India in the second half of the year. Every year smartphone manufacturers strive to innovate in some way or the other. The most common spec that is bumped each year is the camera. We went from having one lens at the back to now having as many as four, and the image quality has absolutely gone through the roof. But this year, manufacturers are focusing more and more on the video quality of smartphones. 
With newer technologies to get improved video, 2021 will see the shift from smartphone photography to smartphone videography. We've been witnessing an increase in the number of foldable devices over the past two years. However, 2021 will take that one step further. At CES this year, multiple companies announced a new form factor of smartphones, the rollable smartphone. LG, TCL all jumped onto the bandwagon and announced their version of rollable devices. Foldable phones will also improve this year as Samsung is expected to announce its third generation of foldable devices in the Galaxy Z Fold series. In 2020, smartphone manufacturers started taking the first step towards the future of smartphones by bidding adieu to the power adapter from the smartphone box. This trend will only continue in 2021 as many manufacturers will cut down this much needed accessory from the smartphone in the name of the environment. However, we predict that these eliminations will only happen in the upper echelons of the smartphone society and budget offerings still have some way to go before the power adapter is removed from their boxes. Despite the pandemic hitting everybody financially, smartphones continue to get expensive and this is a trend that will follow us into 2021 as well. Not only will companies raise the prices on smartphones, but the government of India has also increased the taxes on smartphones, meaning you can expect to shell out more moolah to get your hands on these devices. Now time to move on to our Qualcomm segment where we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. You know, it's silently playing such a huge role inside your phone. We're going to tell you exactly what it does. I'm going to say two words and then I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and not get scared. Ready? Artificial intelligence. You know, the very second anyone hears these two words, they have these different kind of images that get conjured up in their mind. One where everyone's life is smooth and perfect due to AI. And the second where AI takes over the world. And for us humans, life is over. Now it's time to readjust these two extreme swings of the pendulum and understand what exactly artificial intelligence really is. Because frankly, AI is one of the greatest inventions in history. In simple words, artificial intelligence essentially means giving machines the ability to think, to process, decide and execute like a human or near that. On its own, a machine cannot contemplate what's right, what's wrong. That's where AI comes in. And despite the fact that we think of it as something from the future, AI is something that you and I, we all interact with on a daily basis. I mean, we're using it all the time, mostly without even knowing that we are. AI is a part of our daily activities like shopping, streaming movies, photography, searching for information online, even driving. The list is absolutely endless. Now, you could even say that AI in today's time is like electricity a hundred years ago. While we may think that AI is only for big bulky machinery or robotics or factories, that's not actually the case. We started realizing the true potential of AI for personal use when 4G networks became mainstream. 4G gave us computational power to shrink AI to a small chip and put it inside our smartphones and take it with us wherever we actually went. With this, our smartphones became smarter and started to get to know us in a much more accurate way. AI gave big tech companies the ability to predict our behavior, actions and preferences and in turn, we were served up with a much better user experience, one that had fewer glitches and had a lot of increased satisfaction. A good example of this is how our smartphones can now perform up to 26 trillion operations per second and that too with maximum efficiency. AI enriches our day-to-day -day activities like taking photographs. When we take a picture, the AI engine inside the smartphone gets to work and make sure that in milliseconds between us seeing something on our screen and pressing the shutter button to capture it, AI decides on thousands of things like the amount of light there is there, focus, colors, the subject in the picture, what's in the front, what's in the back, and it adjusts the camera settings to give us a perfect image. Now, AI is not done yet, even after the picture is captured, but before showing it to us on the screen, that image is cleaned up of most of the noise, HDR is, is perfect, and most importantly, the picture looks stunning. Now, AI is also really important in video. Do you know how smartphones are coming up with these super stable video modes? How do they do that? 
part is hardware the rest is artificial intelligence the most common use of ai on our smartphones of course is things like voice assistants we often call on these to help us set our alarms remind us of an important meeting or sometimes if we're just too tired to type so now we know a little bit about artificial intelligence and also a little bit about how it helps us but how do our smartphones get this intelligence how do our smartphones get truly smart think about it this way just like you and i have built up and stored memories in our brain over the years to react in certain situations or behave in a certain manner our smartphones also now learn from us the ai engine inside the smartphone learns about how we are using our device it analyzes each and every activity that we do the kind of online searches we make the number of times you open a certain app what we do inside that app and our smartphones and ai engines are now constantly learning all that and improving the most common example of this would be let's say gaming whenever you are playing against the cpu or against your own machine or phone you are essentially playing against the ai engine which learns your moves and tactics and tries to beat you at your own game Now this is why games continue to get harder and also keep us more engrossed. What we are witnessing today is most probably just the tip of the iceberg. The best of AI is yet to come in the near future. And the company that's been driving this, the force behind it all is Qualcomm Technologies. Qualcomm has been focused on delivering a highly optimized AI engine that can run various applications on low power stuff like a Snapdragon processor. <laughs> So now that we understand AI a little bit more let's find out how many people truly realize that they are using AI on a day to day basis we went out on the streets to find out For me it means that computers can kind of think on their own and make decisions on their own uh, without getting help from humans so they can use some algorithms to make decisions machine ko insaan ki sochne ki kshamta badhane ke liye Artificial intelligence means uh, something which is intelligent and self-evolving in itself and does not require human, uh, you know, support or uh, input into it. AI to me is like um, I'm programming something to give me such outcomes. Uh, like when the computer uh, on our behalf does a lot of thinking and does a lot of our work. It's an enormous part here. Yeah. Uh yeah I think it does Yes I strongly believe my phone use AI Absolutely it does Like simple things like uh, for example when an OTP comes in a phone it is put in automatically by the system So the translator that we have a uh, language translator AI can be improved and it can do a lot of things uh, if the computers can kind of collaborate Uh you know AI can be improved you know by not intervening your privacy Uh I think AI is already so evolved what we see and experience is probably 1/10th of what it actually is artificial intelligence can be improved by increasing privacy in the coming future how i see it that most of the things won't require human effort and everything will be dependent upon artificial intelligence future is ai Yes of course I'm not sure if it will be entirely dependent like there would always be a place for like humans and kind of human offering care any day Yeah I think the future will be dependent on artificial intelligence heavily up to a point where it can be harmful Let's now go and talk to Dhananjay Gore VP Engineering Qualcomm Technologies Tanaji thank you so much for joining us now we hear a lot about the usage of ai on phones can you explain to us a few examples of where ai is being used on the phones that normal daily consumers actually use you know that's a great question rajiv in fact you know today ai is all pervasive smartphones machines vehicles and a bunch of other platforms are all becoming more intelligent with artificial intelligence they can perceive and observe and learn user behavior with a context such learning in turn can help it anticipate user needs and react intuitively based on context for example ai on smartphones offers enhanced experiences and new capabilities such as true personal assistance superior photography extended battery life enhanced connectivity natural user interfaces and enhanced security there are many other use cases in development as well and more examples you know biometric based authentication for payments diabetic retinopathy where you have to take a photo 
of your eye using your cell phone and that it helps you to detect diabetes. Now one of the big questions that always comes up is that okay we understand there's AI in a phone but how does Snapdragon enable these AI experiences? You know Qualcomm has been investing in artificial intelligence for over a decade now since November 2007. The Qualcomm engine is now in its sixth generation and also our continued R&D and leadership in low power processing and connectivity, you know, cellular, wireless LAN is essential for enabling all kinds of new artificial intelligence experiences. We enable these experiences through an engine that leverages various building blocks of a Snapdragon processor such as CPU, GPU and then a special purpose compute block called a DSP. This heterogeneous compute and connectivity platform allows us to support a very wide range of AI experiences while keeping power consumption to a minimum. Now, how has AI evolved over the years and where do you think it's going in the future? That's a great question, Rajiv. Artificial intelligence-based applications have just begun with cloud and 4G. As we move to 5G and devices become increasingly more powerful, we expect several new areas to emerge with AI-based applications such as autonomous driving, gaming, network optimizations, video streaming and surveillance. Thank you Dhananjay for joining us and I hope I can get to talk to you once again in the future. Let's take a quick break right now on The Cell Guru Show. When we come back, lots more happening. Our last story today, like I said right in the beginning, is all to do with demand, demand from all of you. TWS earbuds, true wireless sound earbuds are a huge category, but the biggest problem is you can buy TWS earbuds for 1,000, 2,000 rupees and 20, 25,000 rupees also. How do you buy the best TWS earbuds in your budget? Well, we'll tell you how. If there's one industry that has really benefited from the pandemic, it is the audio industry. Demand for good quality audio products skyrocketed in 2020 and that trend has only picked up pace. Truly wireless earbuds became a mainstay in households and every company brought out their version of wireless earbuds. With a plethora of options in the market, which one suits your requirements the best? Let's try and answer that. The most important characteristics of TWS earbuds are sound quality, comfort and fit, battery life, the case to carry the earbuds and a great user experience. But we also consider price a big deciding factor here. One of the most important aspects of creating a good pair of TWS earbuds is comfort and fit. While this is highly subjective and each person has a different in-ear fit, every company now provides multiple ear tips with the earbuds to help you with your perfect fit. However, from our experience, we really liked the fit of the Oppo Enco X. Samsung's latest Galaxy Buds Pro also did a good job with the fit and it was very snug. Now that we've talked about the earbuds, let's talk about carrying them. The case is an important part of TWS earbuds because we carry these tiny things in the case. It is important to keep the case small, ergonomic and also stylish. Some of the best cases we've seen have been on Apple's AirPods, Galaxy Buds Pro, LG Tone Free and the Lipotec Levi. These cases are small enough to fit inside a pocket and they look good. The case on LG's tone-free buds is a prime example of keeping things minimal and stylish at the same time. The Galaxy Buds Pro also have a great pebble-like case. The case also serves another purpose and that is to charge the earbuds while they are inside. One case that packs a big battery is the Lipotec Levi. It provides 40 additional hours of battery in the case and gives the buds a great battery life. Apple's AirPods and Skullcandy Sesh Evo have up to 20 hours of battery backup in the case. Moving on to the user interface, most of the earbuds today have multiple touch controls on the earbud themselves. The important controls are play-pause functionality, switching between music, taking calls using the buds and using the voice assistant. The notable exceptions here are the OnePlus Buds which offer only limited functionality using the buttons. 
Except for these, it's easy to pick the right pair for you. Sound quality is arguably the most important factor here. Right off the bat, one of the best sounding TWS earbuds is the AirPods. The active noise cancellation here is really good and the sound quality is second to none. Another pair that does a great job of cutting through the noise is Samsung's Galaxy Buds Pro. These also have 3D audio and transparency mode, which means you can hear the ambient noise while you still have the buds in your ears. Another notable mention here is the Oppo Enco X, which brings A and C into an affordable price segment. However, the sound quality here is not as good as Samsung's or Apple's offerings. If A and C is something that you're not actively looking for, there are a lot of other great options like Skull Candy Sesh Evo or Lipotech Levi, which come at a budget and also offer great audio output. Now let's talk pricing. TWS earbuds are available at all kinds of prices. If you've got 20,000 rupees in the bank, you can look at some of the more premium offerings like Apple's AirPods or Samsung's Galaxy Buds Pro. Except for an okay battery life, you won't be compromising on much with either of these two. However, if you're shopping on a budget of 5,000 rupees and don't want to miss out on great audio, Skull Candy has some great options for you. Even the Lipotech Levi is a great option here. If a smooth ecosystem is what you crave, the OnePlus Buds for OnePlus devices is a great option, but you will lose out on a lot of features and sacrifice some audio quality. That then was the Sell Guru Show for this week. Lots coming up next week. Do join me on the show.